Let's connect the potentiometer to the daisy. Hi, this is Takumi from Electrosmith. In the previous tutorial, we were able to output an oscillator sound out of the daisy. And we changed the pitch by altering the frequency value and flashing the modified firmware. While this got the job done, it would be way more fun to change the pitch by twisting a knob. So in this video, we'll connect the potentiometer to the daisy seed and change the pitch of an oscillator in real time. We'll also connect another potentiometer for volume control. Okay, let's get started with the electronics. If you have daisy boards like the pod or field, which come with potentiometers already connected to the daisy seed, you can skip to the programming section. The potentiometer is configured as a voltage divider, which outputs different voltages depending on knob position. When the knob is twisted all the way to the left here, it is outputting its minimum value. And when we start twisting clockwise, the value will increase towards the maximum. The output of the analog sensor can be connected to one of the DAISY's ADC pins, which stands for Analog to Digital Converter. The ADC pin can measure the incoming analog voltage value and convert it to a digital value that we can map to the internal sense parameter like pitch or volume. Okay, let's look at the potentiometer's pins. This pin on the left is for connecting a ground, which should be familiar from our previous tutorial. The rightmost pin is the VCC pin, which we need to supply with the positive 3.3 volt from the DAISY. Now when we twist the knob clockwise, the output value will increase from 0 volt to 3.3 volt. Because the DAISY's ADCs are 16-bit resolution, there are 65,536 discrete values between 0 volt and 3.3 volt. If you follow the previous tutorial, you should have audio jacks connected to the DAISY like this for inputting and outputting sounds. In this video, we'll be adding two potentiometers to this breadboard by using more jumper wires. And I recommend putting a knob on the potentiometer so that it's easier to twist. Before we start connecting the potentiometer, I highly suggest that you disconnect power from the DAISY in case we accidentally connect the positive 3.3 volt to the ground. This will not instantly fry your DAISY, but over time, this will damage it. Okay, now we can get started. First, let's insert the potentiometer on this side of the breadboard. These two legs on this particular potentiometer can be inserted into the breadboard for a more robust connection. Because we have the potentiometer placed on this side, we'll need to bridge the breadboard's two ground rails together with a long wire like this for easier access. By the way, with most standard size breadboards, each power rail is divided into two sections in the middle that are isolated from each other. So, we need to grab a wire and bridge them together. We need to do this for both ground rails. In order to properly read analog values, we need to have the analog ground and digital ground connected together. So here's the digital ground pin, and all we need to do is to connect it to the ground rail. Now we can connect the ground to the left pin of the potentiometer. Next, we need to create a positive power rail, similar to how we made the ground rail. As mentioned earlier, we need to supply the potentiometer with an analog 3.3 volt power from the DAISY seed. So, we'll connect this 3.3 analog voltage pin to this positive power rail. Now, we can supply the VCC pin from the positive power rail. Please make sure that you don't accidentally connect the 3.3 volt pin to the ground rail. Again, this will damage your DAISY over time. Finally, we can connect the potentiometer's output pin to the ADC0 pin right here. It's a good practice to use black or gray wire for ground, 
red or orange for positive power, and different colors from those for analog output. I usually use green. And now the potentiometer is connected to the daisy. Let's do a bit of programming. First, let's display the potentiometer values on the serial monitor to make sure that we connected that component successfully to the daisy. We can flash the analog read serial example code that comes with Arduino IDE and look at the serial monitor. So go to File, Examples, Basics, and open up the analog read serial example. Cool thing is that we only need to add one line to have it work with the daisy which I'll explain more in a second. This code uses the analog read function that tells the daisy to read the incoming analog value on a specific pin, which in this example is the A0 pin. This is the pin that we connected that potentiometer's output to. Then that red value will be printed out using the serial print line function. Because the Arduino's ADCs are 10-bit resolution, the analog read function's default setting is 10-bit. We need to set this function to be 16-bit because the DAISY's ADCs are 16-bit resolution. We can do that by simply adding the line analog read resolution 16 before analog read. Okay, let's put the DAISY into bootloader mode. So press and hold the boot button, press and hold the reset button, let go reset, and finally let go boot and hit upload. Then go to tools, port, and select USB modem. After that, go to tools and open up the serial monitor. And now at the bottom of the screen, we should see a value go from 0 to 65,535 when we twist the knob clockwise. Nice. If we did not have the line analog read resolution 16, the range would have been 0 to 1023 like this. So that's a lot of resolutions lost. Okay, now the fun begins. Let's map that sensor value to a synth parameter. We'll begin by opening up the code from the last tutorial. We can resave this as my first synth or something along that line. Previously, we change the value in this setFreak function here in order to change the pitch. So instead of putting a number in the function, perhaps we can instead put a variable that changes according to the knob position. That way, we'll be able to change the pitch of an oscillator in real time by twisting a knob. So we'll first declare a new float variable for the pitch knob with float pitch knob. In my callback, we'll add the line OSC set freak pitch knob. While we're here, let's delete this input part so that we're only outputting the oscillator. Next, we'll scroll all the way down to the void loop section where we can add a line like pitch knob equals analog read A0 in order to change the pitch knob variable based on the knob position. This will work somewhat. As we saw earlier, the analog value range is 0 to 65,535. So not a big fan of outputting a 0Hz tone, or a 65,535 hertz tone either. So let's do a bit of math and scale to a range of 440 to 880Hz. First, let's divide the analog read A0 by 65,535.0. Now the range is scaled to 0.0 to 1.0, which is easier to calculate with. Then we can multiply by 440.0. Now the range is 0, 0.0 to 440.0. Again, we don't want 0 as the lowest value. So we'll simply offset it by adding 440.0. Now the range is 440.0 to 880.0. Much better. And that's it. Now when we twist the knob, the pitch knob variable should change, which will alter the frequency value before the oscillator signal is outputted. Let's put the daisy into bootloader mode and flash.
Awesome, success! As a quick bonus, let's change the waveform. Cytone is cool and all, but we can use other waveforms. So go down to where set waveform function is at, and we can change the parameter to any of the following. I'm gonna choose a sawtooth. And let's flash. Okay, let's add another potentiometer so that we can also control the amplitude or volume in real time. So we can connect the second potentiometer very similarly. The only difference will be that the output pin will be connected to the ADC1 pin. And that's it. In terms of the code, we'll do something very similar to how we map the knob value to pitch. First, we'll declare float amp knob. Then in my callback, we'll add the line OSC set amp amp knob. And finally, we'll add amp knob equals analog read A1 divided by 65535.0 because the range of amplitude is 0.0 to 1.0. All right, let's flash it. Our project is becoming more and more like a synthesizer. This is very exciting. So what can we add next? In the next tutorial, we'll connect the digital component like a button and trigger the oscillator tone with it. While you wait for that video to come out, explore mapping the knob value to other synth parameters. I recommend checking out the Moog ladder filter example and see if you can map the knob to a cutoff frequency. And if you're successful, please share a video on the Daisy Discord server. Okay, have fun with your synthesizer, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Take care.